Okay, you probably noticed as you came in, we had a, uh, our, our Yuki-san is here from Philadelphia, and uh, she's coming at this time to uh, uh, provide some special music for us. Yuki-san, if you would. Yuki, she did. Yuki sings. Let's welcome her. <laughs> Peter 4, 8 to 11. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Can't sit safe. Peter, no四章八節から十節十一節何よりもまず互いの愛を熱く保ちなさい愛は多くの罪を覆うのである不平を言わずに互いにもてなし合いなさいあなた方はそれぞれ賜物をいただいているのだから神の様々な恵みの良き管理者
Father, may the words of my mouth and Yasko Son's mouth, and the meditations of all of our hearts now, just bring pleasure to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now previously we have noted here that Paul speaks about spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians and Romans. But they're, but they're, but they're also mentioned in 1 Peter 4.10 and that's that passage that I want to examine with you now. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Notice that Peter says that every believer of God has received at least one spiritual gift from God. Now to understand these spiritual gifts, you have to realize first that they're not natural talents like singing or playing a musical instrument. Because if they were talents, they wouldn't be gifts, would they? But then let me tell you a few other reasons why these spiritual gifts are not the same as natural talents. First, while natural talents benefit people in the earthly realm, gifts benefit people in the spiritual realm. And while natural talents advance man's plan, spiritual gifts advance God's plan. And while natural talents glorify ourselves, spiritual gifts glorify God. So, natural talents are not the same as spiritual gifts. We need to understand that. We also need to understand that spiritual gifts are not the fruit of the Spirit referred to in Galatians 5. Remember we talked about those fruits of the Spirit several months ago. Love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit. And those fruits of the Spirit are important because they shape the believer's character. But spiritual gifts are also important because they shape believer's service. The fruits of the Spirit are the same for every Christian. Spiritual gifts are different for every Christian. Without even 
knowing what the spiritual gifts are, you can see in 1 Peter 5.11 that they fall into two categories. Gifts connected with the ministry of the word. And gifts connected with practical service. Let me list some of them for you. First, those connected with the ministry of the word. Like apostleship. Now, apostleship was a gift given by Jesus to his 12 special disciples and also claimed by Paul on special grounds. I'd say this gift is no longer available to anyone. I say that since by definition an apostle had to have been with Jesus from the time he was baptized by John until the time he was taken up into heaven. He would also have had to have been a witness to Jesus' resurrection. So, if anyone tells you he's an apostle, ask him how old he is. If he's less than 2,000 years old, he's not an apostle. Number two among the spiritual gifts is prophecy. We see it described in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. Prophecy is the ability to express the mind of God either by revelation or from His Word. Could someone have this gift today? Yes, many. But not all pastors. Third is exhortation. Romans 12:8 describes a person who possesses this gift as someone who's able to stir up believers. Those of you who have heard Dub Jackson preach, you know, he can stir up believers. The discerning of spirits is number four. You read about it in 1 Corinthians 12.10. It's the ability to tell whether a person is speaking from the truth, the truth from the Holy Spirit, or speaking lies from Satan. Now you can see why these are supernatural gifts because no amount of study could give you these ability. Only God can give it to you. Teaching, as described in Romans 12.7 and 1 Corinthians 12.28, is number five. 
12章28節で描かれている教える賜物が第5番目の賜物です。Now this gifted teacher is different from the teacher who just tells you what he or she has learned in school or from his studies. この教師の賜物を神様から賜物として与えられているものはただ学校で学んだ学習による知識を教えるだけの教師とは異なっております。This teacher not only explains what a text says, he also applies it to an individual's heart. That's a gift. The gift of tongues is next. Now, let me say, this gift is not simply the ability to speak in a foreign language. Tongues translated from the Greek word glossi are different from the word translated languages. That Greek word is phoni, phonics. And 1 Corinthians 12, 10 and 30 says if you speak in tongues, you need to have someone present who has the gift of interpretation of tongues. そして第一コリント十二章十節にあるようにもしも威厳を語る賜物を与えられているならその威厳はその場に行って。So you can see if the gift of tongues had been simply the power to speak in a foreign language not previously studied, there'd be no need for the gift of interpretation. Let me explain it another way. If the gift of tongues was simply the power to speak in a foreign language, and I had that gift, I just open my mouth and speak in Nihongo. <laughs> Dr. Wachi would have nothing to do. <laughs> But please stay, Yasko san, I need you. <laughs> But if someone has the gift of tongues, you need someone else present with the gift of interpretation of tongues. The next gift is a big one and one that's absolutely given to some people today. It's the gift of faith. The gift to do really great things for God. George Mueller is an example of that kind of faith. With no organization to back him, George Mueller, Mueller took care of 10,000 orphans for 60 years. Can you? 10,000 orphans he cared for for 60 years. And he had no organization to back him. George Mueller's faith wasn't an ordinary faith. It was a gift from God. Perhaps you have this gift. If you have it, use it. There are other gifts associated with practical Christian service. Number one would be the working of miracles. 
Philip did miracles in Samaria, and because he did, people listened to his preaching. Miracles like tongues do today occur primarily in very primitive places where they lack the written word, and God uses them to validate the message of the gospel. Number two is the gift of healing. The miraculous power to heal disease. Now when this gift has truly occurred, every no everyone knows the person has been healed. Those in the early church who received this gift performed supernatural healings. But when they told a lame man that he was healed, the man didn't limp away, he ran. Again, we see more evidence of this gift being used in the primitive areas. Leadership described in Romans 12:8 and administration in 1 Corinthians 12 and Numbers and 3 and 4. They are Numbers 3 and 4. These are gifts of wise counsel and direction in the practical affairs of the church. Can you learn leadership skills? Of course you can. But you can't learn to be a gifted leader. And the church needs gifted leaders. God gives some that gift. Number five is a gift that people sometimes say is the lowliest gift of all. It's the gift of helps, but it's not lowly at all. This gift appears to be the gift that was the gracious beginning of the office of deacon. So here are some of the spiritual gifts. There are, of course, more and probably some he's not even written down. But the point is this. God has given to each of us, each of us, a gift, an ability that we have not learned or been born with. So what can this gift do for you? The answer is nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> because your gift has not been given to you for your benefit. It's been given to you to better equip you to lovingly serve others. Notice I said lovingly. 
Every place spiritual gifts are mentioned in the Bible, they're either preceded or followed by the mention of love. So every member minister of the Christ Church is called by him to lovingly be both faithful and fruitful with his or her spiritual gift. He's given you at least one spiritual gift. Think of that as you sit there in the chair today. God's given you a gift. Maybe He's given you the gift of leadership. You're a gifted leader. But are you using the gift in His work? Maybe you have a gift for teaching. You have the ability, and you recognize it, you have the ability not only to teach bodies of material, but you can also move people to act upon that. Are you using your gift of teaching for His glory? Or maybe He's given you the gift of faith. But it's so long since you used that gift, it's become a little rusty. It needs to be exercised. Now listen to me now. This is not something you pray for about. Let me repeat that. This is not something you pray for. He already gave you at least one gift the day you were saved. Now, if you're not sure, not sure what it is, of course you can pray about that. Or you can ask a Christian friend who knows you very well, what do you think is my gift? Ask him or her to help you define that supernatural gift that God's given you. And then, and this is after the gift is defined, do as he told you to do in 1 Peter 4.10. Take that special gift that he's given to you and employ it, use it in serving the steward of the manifold grace of God. Because you see, that gift was not earned. It came as a gift of grace. And it came to be used for His glory. Last week we talked to you about using, being used of God in His service. You know, we hate to be used by somebody else. 
人間とは誰かに利用されるのを嫌うものですね。But to be used by God, that's a special blessing. しかし、神様に用いられるということは特別な恵みなのです。But when He decides He wants to use you, He doesn't leave you unprepared for the task. He gives you a gift. 神様があなたを用いられようとするときはただただあなたをそのままにはしておかずあなたが与えられる神様の賜物のギフトをまず与えてから神様はお,あたあのお持ちになります。Think of it. The Bible says everyone here who claims the name of Christ has received a gift. ここにいる神様を信じている人は誰でも Use it and know the blessing of being used by Him. Amen. Pray. Father God, We thank you for this morning. Thank you for the time we had together. Pray, Lord, that as we each examine our lives, we'll also examine them to see what gift it is you've given to us, each one of us. And we'll use that gift. Help us to identify it and use it for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.